But the subject matter here, fellas, is what Micah Parsons had to say. His conduct was not professional in what he said. Uh, and, and that's the sad part. And he doesn't even know that. He, 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 you know, and he's a smart guy. He can't, he, he, he can't like figure that out. Um, he, if he's speaking for the team and you want to speak for the team, you have an owner that you can actually go talk to. Jerry talks to all his players. Go talk to Jerry. If, if you don't like certain things on this team or the way it's done, go talk to Jerry Jones. But this is the lack of awareness. And if you can imagine, if he's saying that, what's going on in this locker room? They got no shot. Zero. They, they got, I mean, you know, and I've been in locker rooms in my whole life. And is there certain things, what, what we say here, what we do here, it, it stays here. When we leave here, it's, it's not for the – for the fan base, it's not for anybody. This is our home, right? And it's just, it, it, it's sad because he don't get it. He's just done. It's, man, he's a great player, but this, he don't get it. It's a subtle so. thing, but it speaks volumes about where the Dallas Cowboys are in terms of their leadership or lack thereof. We questioned it coming into the year. Who is the leader of this team? Is it Mike McCarthy, who's a lame duck? Is it Dak Prescott, who was in a contract dispute? Is it Michael Parsons? who hasn't met a teammate or a coach that he doesn't want to throw under the bus in his podcast? Is it CeeDee Lamb, who was a malcontent because he wasn't getting his bag? Like, who is, the, who is the leader for the Dallas Cowboys? It can't be the owner, Jerry Jones. But it or is. Or as much talking as he does, he can't lead those guys when it comes to the on-the-field product. So who the hell is the leader? Again, the issues with the Dallas Cowboys are cultural. And Smalls, the, the, the red flag was what Demarcus Lawrence said – after the playoff loss to the Green Bay Packers when he said the team was too burnt out Mm -hmm. in order to play well, that they were tired. I don't know how the hell you're tired when you're in the playoffs trying to compete for a championship, but that's what he said the state of the Dallas Cowboys locker room was. And that malaise, that hangover, has extended into this season. And and now the Cowboys are in worse shape because they have less flexibility under their cap. They got a quarterback that's going to account for $90 million in cap space in 2025. I mean, I don't know how you work around that while you're going through a rebuild, but the reality is you are rebuilding. Mm -hmm. You are closer to a top five pick than you are a Super Bowl. So Michael Parsons talking about holding up a trophy for Zach Martin. Bruh, y'all ain't going to be holding up a trophy in Dallas for a long time. If you holding up a trophy, it's because you playing for another team. Mike can leave and go wherever he wants, but the guys I, you know, I kind of feel bad for his guys like Zach Martin and guys who might be on their last year on their way out, you know, because – that's who I wanted to hold the trophy for. You know, you want to w- win games and do great things with those type of legends who put in more time and work than Mike McCarthy ever did. So those are the kind of guys that I have so much sympathy and hurt for. Oof. That's a tough one, D1. That's a, that's a tough one to take. What, what, is, what is your what is – I'm moving away. What is, what is your reaction to that? I'm going to say over. I, I, Greeny, I've never heard anyone say anything remotely like that after a game. I, re- I really have. And, like, who the hell Michael Parsons think he is talking like that after a game? Bro, you've been missing all these games with the, with the injury. And last time I checked, the head coach is a Super Bowl winning, winning coach. And I know the season hasn't gone the way that everyone is expected to, to go and all that. But for you to sit there in the locker room right after you, your team gets pummeled and to just undress your head coach in, in that manner, see, that's what's going on with all these podcast boys out here in the locker room. Everybody want to fit, sit there and want to, they figure, they want to you know, spout and say all this type of stuff. There used to be a time when there was a little bit of respect, a little, a little decorum in the locker room, because at the end of the day, it was about we. We didn't do enough. All of y'all got your asses kicked. Okay, and you're going to go out here and talk about your head coach, basically your head coach not working, not doing anything to try to prepare the team? I just think it's a bunch of BS, man. Yeah. I, I really do. I, I Like, we can sit here and laugh and all that stuff, type of stuff and be here in shock, but that's disrespectful what, Mike, what, what, what Michael Parsons did to Mike McCarthy in that situation because I know, again, it's not the results that Mike McCarthy wants, but I know that man is busting his ass every single day to try to go out there and get a win and to hear your and hear one of your star players come out there and say that? Yeah. Come on, man. Like, uh, I, I can't ride with that. That's total, total BS. You're, you're exactly right. And look, 
I mean, coaches are there at some some days 20 hours a day. Yeah. For two or three days at least during the week. I mean, the, the hours they put in are it, it's unmatched. Mike McCarthy, I, okay, he doesn't deserve this damn comment. He doesn't. No coach does. Look, there's some horrible coaches out there, but none of them deserve this. The kind of work that they put in as coaches, like, I, I'm just telling you. I, I, I don't know. Like, most players know that these dudes, you can forget about it. You're giving up family time. You're giving up all kinds of stuff in your life, and you're going to get some ass sitting back. I don't care how talented he is. That is absolutely BS. And, and if you would have work half as freaking hard – as a damn coach does, maybe you'd be able to play every damn game. Maybe your team wouldn't just be a bunch of punks and lay it down every damn week like you're doing. How about being a damn football team? You're going to sell your damn coach out? It's, it's a crock of sh- you know what. Yes. Mm. Uh, I think I understood well the beginning. Of, well, first of all, I completely well co-signed both of what you said. At the beginning, I think if what he's saying is, well, Mike McCarthy can continue to coach in in his life if he wants to, but for the players like Zach Martin, this is going to be the end of their careers. If that's the point he was trying to make, that Mike McCarthy's career doesn't end with this season and Zach Martin's does, maybe I'm I'm even giving him too much credit that that might have been what he was trying to say. But then he loses you forever, and I mean that literally forever, when he says who's done more here than Mike McCarthy has ever done. That's just obviously beyond the pale. It's well beyond decorum. Everything you just said, I I triple cosign. They have no choice but to tear it down, Cowboys. Not only we've talked about roster problem, they have a culture problem now. No. Yeah. Oh, yes, they, they do. They, there's a culture problem. <clears throat> and they were, they were given the opportunity to restart at the end of last season after the loss, and they chose not to. Jerry Jones doesn't have a choice now. It's a tear down, and you've got to rebuild everything. Talent, culture, because right now this, this is what's starting. The finger pointing. Oh. Yeah. And, and the finger pointing. And it makes me think, man, how, how much is Dak? patched together so much of the issues because of the way that his leadership this this is a problem right now in Dallas this is a this is becoming a everybody looking out for me I played on Owen 16 we didn't get to that we didn't get to that where we were bashing coaches in each other in the media I played on 2 and 14 we didn't get to that okay so Micah had the opportunity to step forward as a leader of an organization that everybody clearly knows talent-wise isn't where it needs to be. He's got a problem. Yeah, I mean. His best player did that. Yeah, I mean, and Mike McCarthy clearly knows he's dead man walking. I mean, there's no question about it, you know. And he's going to be out that door. You don't need to kick kick his butt out the door. And, you know, look, and here's the crazy thing. Look, they they got to restart, but they got to do something that, in my opinion, like, how are you going to fix it? Well, I look at a couple of teams recently. All right, I look at the Lions. Who'd they hire? One of their former players, right? Mm-hmm. Dan Campbell. Yeah. Okay. How about the Houston Texans? Former right player. Right down the road. Former player, one of their former players. Leader. D'Amico Ryans. D'Amico yep. Ryans. All right. I can see Aaron Glenn going to New Orleans next year. Mm-hmm. All right. Or, 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 the, or the Jets. You know, a former player. All right. Deion Sanders may be in, in play here. And I'm going to tell you. That's, they need something. They need to have somebody that has the pride in that damn organization. Being a Dallas Cowboy, the pride you take in it. And by the way, Dion, everywhere he's been, has been kicking you-know-what. Mm-hmm. All right, Jackson State, they were un- un- unbelievable when he was there. He takes Colorado. Right now, they're 7-2. and two. Nobody saw that coming. They're playing in the big, you know, whatever, the damn Big, big 12, now. yeah. Big 12. Like, I'm just saying. That, 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 because I already know, Mike McCarthy's a good football coach, and he, he's, he's going to be out, out the door. There's no doubt about it. That whole, the, the whole thing's going to be blown up. But watch what happens. They need that. How are you going to get this kid back on board? He's going to have to damn respect that guy that comes in that building. You're not going to respect Deion Sanders? He's twice the player you are. All right? And you know what? I coach Deion Sanders. Great teammate. I, I like the idea. But I think we are a long way away from that. I hear what you're saying, but they still have well, – how many games have they played? They're three and six, three and seven. He's got seven games left to get through this. How do, you, how do they walk back into the building? D. Wood, you were a great team guy. You were a team leader. How do they walk back into the building today 
with Dak Prescott sort of off on the side, you know, with get, getting surgery on Wednesday because his hamstring has been torn off the bone, how do they walk back into that building today and start preparing for whatever it is that the rest of their season is going to be after the loudest voice on their team, for better or in this case, most definitely for worse, has just said that? I'll, 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 let me first say this. The most talented guy doesn't mean that you're a leader. Mm-hmm. It's just, that's, 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 that's a fact. I've seen so many talented guys that weren't actual leaders on their team. I think it can come from the coaches. It has to come through, come from the players in the locker room. It has to come from the players in the locker room. The players in the locker room has to, de- has to, uh, has to demand some accountability, what's going on inside the locker room. Because I can tell you right now, that BS that Michael Parsons just pulled, if, you, if you're any player in that locker room that gives a damn about culture, anything in, the, in this league, you don't let that stuff ride. Like, we're going to have a conversation. I don't give a damn who you are in that I don't give a damn if you're Michael Parsons or not. We're going to have a conversation because you can't just have that going on in the locker room. It will, it will literally tear the locker room apart. Yeah, I mean, the, the, look, let's face it. I mean, all the heat that comes on, you know, when you're a head coach, he gets drilled. He gets blamed for everything. Quarterbacks and head coaches. Yeah, right? When, it, when it's going great, you get all the praise. You get all the, uh, you know, when it, when it doesn't go, it's in your face. All right? I get it. Why the hell do you think as a player that you just had to do that? You had to pile on. Like, this man is not facing enough criticism? Yeah. I, I mean, it's just, it's asinine that this kid did that. I mean, it really is. But yeah. where do you go from here? You're right. Do you, there's no way in hell Mike McCarthy going to say and rally the damn troops. He's, yeah. he's got one of his damn generals out there stabbing him in the back. Like, I, I don't know. This is a, an absolute disaster. The offseason can't get here fast enough for, for Dallas. Yeah, and right now they could change his name to either Mika Parsons, because it's all about him, or Ika Parsons, because it's all about me and I, and it has nothing whatsoever to do with everybody else on that team, and it doesn't make a damn bit of difference how talented you are. You don't win a with guys. A reporter asked Mika his thoughts on the, you know, idea of Mike McCarthy getting the ax this season during the season. So, what? I know what. Seriously. Like like is is that like that's what you're going to do to Mike McCarthy? Like, the guy won a what Super Bowl. What you mean? Bowl. Mike about to get it too if if Dak Prescott got it too the no, week before. No, but I'm just like but but you could do it diplomatically and just say, you know what I mean, the coach situation is nothing I could really do. You know what I'm saying, like to dress it up. He was heading the right way. Right. It's and above then, my pay, pay grade, blah, blah, blah. he was right. heading the right way. And then it's about, you know, my teammates. I get that sentiment about the veterans and the teammates, but it just, that's a, that, what is that? You know what it is, in all honesty, the, it, it, okay, Let, let's be fair as journalists. And present the other side his his clarification because he said so he this, tweeted out what happened on this I, interception I is at, there a penalty was, on uh, the Rams? We'll get that too. We'll get that too. I was looking at you. He said uh, he tried to clarify. Rob G played this clarification. So we Mike. try to get the sound on that one, but we're a little short staffed today. Here's what he said though in his clarification hours later on his own podcast because you know Micah is a member of the media now. So as soon as this clip went viral, he said, "Go ahead and check out my podcast and and hear what I got to say about it." He said, "Quote." I never once threw or even intended to throw Mike McCarthy under the bus. The question that was asked about here and the Dallas Cowboys, did I see Mike McCarthy in our future? I said, that's above my pay grade. Didn't elaborate any further than that. Well, the the problem is that's the part he's not being fair with. He did not. Stop. I mean, he's, he did not stop there. He should have stopped that's there. That's where, again, hey, right. man, that's above my prey, Gary. He's like, oh, I'm only worried about the veterans in the locker room. I don't care about Mike McCarthy. He absolutely was within his rights to say, because truth be told, it is above his pay grade. Right? I ain't paying the man. I don't know what they're going to do. That ain't got nothing to do with me. I just know we lost the game, and I'm mad for my player. That is exactly where he was going. The issue with this is you start to have a lot of guys who have multiple microphones in their face. And what I mean by that is you're going to get the one in front of your locker. That's just a part of the game, right? You're going to get that one after a game. You're going to get the podium. Hey, come talk. But also, you keep putting the microphone in front of your own face willingly with the podcast or willingly with the lives. What used to get John Morant in trouble? Coating guns in live. If he was toting guns in his living room by himself with his boys, whatever, we would have never known. Is that you're toting guns on Instagram lives. So all these microphones and these cameras – 
They keep putting them in their own faces, and that's where you're going to have blunders. Rob and I know this. You keep doing this. He and I are going to say something stupid, say something we didn't mean. We do this live, and there's going to be something where you didn't mean it exactly like that. I want to take it back. And Micah keeps doing this because i got to have a podcast. got to answer these questions. got to go on this talk show. got to do that. And that's where you're going to get it. And you're not necessarily savvy enough right now, he's still very young, to understand how to get out of questions or to answer certain ways, or to make sure your point is being exactly uh, articulated in the way in which you want to. One of the things I try to do, Rob, when it comes to Twitter, which not as much now, but especially historically, I try to take an extra beat and really ask myself, am I comfortable with what I'm about to tweet? So that if I ever got to stand on business with it and look at it, so, oh, well, my boss or somebody, oh, you said this, and I can be like, yo, I'm going to be real with y'all. That's exactly how I felt. That's exactly what I meant, and I stand by that. I want to be able to do that and not have to back. Well, I didn't mean it. Well, no, I was trying to say, well, what I really meant was, because, no, if you look at it from this angle, I don't want to do that. And that's what Mike is doing because he's talking so much, answering his answering his answers. And you got to be savvy enough to know when and what to say things. And that, to me, ignoring Dak as a top 10 guy, you it's, know that's going to get out there. It's bad. It's bad. And, th- and this is why, look, I'm not of the school – Athletes should shut up and play. That, right. That's that's not what I'm I'm talking about. Wh- what's the benefit to your team and your teammates by putting this out all the time? You can, when you can offend people, make people feel a certain way towards you. Like, what's the benefit? There is no benefit to the team. That's that's the problem I have. There is no benefit. The Cowboys don't get anything from this. And if I'm Mike McCarthy, really, let's. This is how. Like, you would just be like, there's no reason to do it. Mike McCarthy's still your head coach. Yeah, and, and, right? I, yeah, and Dak's still your quarterback. Dak's still and, your quarterback. What What are you trying to say or do that you, you – what, what do you get from this? This is it's like self-inflicted. That, you, know what, you know what a phrase, shout out to Mama Dub, Mama Dub always says, just because you can doesn't mean you should. And, and this is what I've been saying. This is why you, we talked about it a little bit before. This is why you should trade him. You should mm-hmm. just – he might not and, – and you first of all, you can get a haul from him because he's a talented player. Without a doubt. Okay, so this is not I'm going to disparage him, I'm going to do a Sean Payton on him and all that. No, this guy can play. But you're not going anywhere. you got so many holes on this Dallas Cowboy team. If you can get a couple of picks, top picks for him, remember, they got to sign him. Right, they just signed the quarterback and 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 the wide receiver. Yeah, why both of them pay right? a bunch of money, big big money, and and he's due to get paid. I would ju- I would move on. I would just say, you know what? As good as he is, we need more players, and he's just become a distraction. He's becoming that. Un- and again, the worst part about this is it's self inflicted. He's doing this to himself. The way again in which he's answering questions, the way he's got his podcast, he's talking about this. And let me be now. To be fair to Micah, Dallas ain't nothing but a bunch of distractions. C.D. Lamb talking about the sun in my eyes. Jerry Jones mad about him. Well, build a whole new building. With the sun's in everybody's eyes. So you got Jerry Jones mad at C.D. C.D. mad at Dak. Dak ain't mad at C.D. C.D. mad at Dak. But they're not mad. We're best friends now. Jerry Jones trying to get radio people fired. Like the Dallas cop. You know what it is? It's the show Dallas. It is nothing but an 80s sitcom or, or, or drama Dallas. And Micah is now adding into the unnecessary self-inflicted wounds that have become the Dallas. As a matter of fact, can we not talk? Can that be a platform I run on if I was running for a political office? Can Please, we not talk about no them politics. anymore? Can we not talk about them? Can we only talk about Rob Parker? Teams that actually deserve it? Like you mentioned, the Steelers, right? Justin Fields, I was high on him. Russell was playing well. I, I am comfortable talking about him. The Lions, they deserve it. The Ravens, when they, you know what I mean? The, the Bills can get... I'm tired of talking about the Cowboys. I want to reclaim my time. Shout out to Congresswoman Maxine Waters. Can I reclaim my time, as she said, the all the time that we got to talk about the Cowboys, undeservedly so? Period. I'm sorry, I digress. My gosh. They ain't did nothing to deserve it. I, I what just, have they done? I, I, I just think at some point, like, how in the world is Micah, like, Either you got to be more mature, but I, but I just don't see the path long term because of the financial obligation that that you owe a guy like him. And you just and you need so many things. Look at your defense every week. 
They're giving up 34, 35, 40 points every week. This is a team that won 16 straight home games? The worst, ain't the same yeah. team. The worst part about it, too, is that if they were to decide to go with what you're saying, he they're getting rid of arguably the actual most talented player. The guy like the guy you can for the most part. Nobody nobody has a perfect game every game, but the guy you can kind of depend on. And that's the worst part about this is that they're gonna have to get rid of the guy. But even with say. him, they can't stop anybody. Right. And that's the scary part, is what I'm trying to say. Cause they got so many holes. I think they're gonna their excuse is gonna be at the offseason for them. Is gonna they're gonna say well, we weren't healthy. We didn't have Demarcus Lawrence. We didn't have Micah for most of the season. We didn't have uh, the forget the cornerback's name right now. They're going to be able to say, "We didn't have these guys." Boy, what could have been had we nah, did? I don't, you I know don't, what I mean when you I, try to yeah. make that excuse, that built-in thing for yourself. We but, all do it. For, I ain't we, go to the gym because all oh, my car was acting up, so I ain't go but, to the gym. But and, we were talking, but but even coming in, we knew that they didn't do enough in the off season. Mm-hmm. Like people said, the, what did the Cowboys do? They didn't do, they didn't anything. do anything. They needed a running. And they back. waited too they long to got, sign they, CD. They, they went wanted, needed a running back. They don't want to sign Derrick Henry. He's available. He wanted to play in Texas, wanted to go back. Oh, yeah. They didn't want to they keep get Pollard. Him, right? And instead, they go back and get Ezekiel Elliott because he now was cheap. Now he's mad. Right. He ain't showing up for uh, for practices. The he's late. They left him at they home. They left, left him at home. Yeah, it's just, uh, it's just a bad situation overall in Dallas right now, man. All right, 877-99 on Fox, 877-996-6369. It's real simple. Is it time for the Cowboys to sever ties with Micah Parsons? And I'm talking about a trade moving forward, getting two or three pieces, right, to help them rebuild this team because I, where are the Cowboys going? Home, dinner, maybe a show? They're not going to the postseason. They, I, they ain't hanging out in Jerry's world either because he's kicking everybody out. He mad at that. CD ain't welcome in there no more. Now, it's crazy. This, after a game, when it feels like there's a giant finger pointing going on, there, there's – the Cowboys' culture right now is a culture of me and not a culture of we. Go ahead, Shannon. Who's surprised, who's surprised by this? As you I mentioned, uh, uh, Jerry Jones has did a horrible job of, ta- uh, of assembling talent, putting a great roster around him. Okay, if you couldn't stop the run the le- previous years and you do nothing but change the D coordinators, it's personnel. It's Jims and Joes. This ain't, it's not X's and O's. You're too light in the britches. You're built to play with a lead. And when you can't get the lead, people run the ball down your throat. And for Michael to say that, he said, Zach Martin and those guys have put in more time and done more than Mike McCarthy ever could. I guess Mike McCarthy better pull out some watermelons. But the subject matter here, fellas, is what Micah Parsons had to say. Now, I can't wait till Damian Woody comes on here at hour number two. He'll be here because I saw him get all emotional and get up this morning. And, and and Rex Ryan damn near cussed. Okay, yeah, yeah. I mean he cussed, but 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 caught himself. Okay, and I understand that. You know, what I'm saying it is what it is. You understand? I get it. I understand it. They lucky I wasn't in this building when they were getting all emotional like that. Because you see, it's real easy. Micah Parsons should not have said what he said. He was wrong. That's a line you don't cross when it comes to your teammates. And your teammates include the people you work with as well as the people you work for, okay? No argument there. Here's my problem with all of you, all of you, when it comes to Micah Parsons and what he said. That's not Micah Parsons. That's not something that he normally would say. Why would you do it now? See, on too many occasions, we don't ask ourselves that question. Let's get to Mike McCarthy. You the guy that joked around about how you lied to Jerry Jones because you wanted to get the job. You're the guy that swore up and down that Kellen Moore was a hindrance to this team, even though you had the second-ranked office in the National Football League because you wanted to be the one calling plays. I mean, we got to absolve. We got to take some of the pressure off our court. Micah Parsons is one of the most electrifying defensive players in the NFL today, and there's no denying his talent. On the field, he's a game changer. He can sack the quarterback, cover receivers, and make plays that few other players can. But lately, it feels like his focus has shifted away from dominating the game, and this onto shift becoming has a become especially apparent instead. through his podcast, where he's been very vocal about a number of issues, most notably, his comments about the Cowboys head coach. Mike McCarthy, look, players should have a voice, but when you're a key player on a team like the Cowboys, the public comments and constant daring of grievances can be more damaging 
than helpful, after all. McCarthy is the one who's guiding the team, making decisions, and calling the shots. If you're Micah Parsons, and you've got a problem with your coach, it should happen behind There's a time and place doors. for that conversation. Taking those concerns to a podcast, for the world to hear, only fuels unnecessary drama and division in the locker room. The Cowboys don't need distractions like this, especially from their best player. It's clear that Parsons is passionate, and that's great. It's one of the qualities that has made him so special on the field. But there's a difference between being passionate and being constantly on the mic, offering critiques and stirring up tension. It almost feels like Parsons is trying to build his brand off of controversy rather than just focusing on his craft. His podcast and social media posts are getting a lot of attention, but what about his actual performance on the field? If he's spending more time crafting sound bites than he is studying game film or preparing for his next opponent, that's a problem. The Cowboys don't need more headlines. They need Parsons to be that playmaking force we all know he can be. His leadership should be demonstrated by how he plays, not how many times he can get his opinion into the media. Fans and teammates alike expect him to step up and lead through action, not by stirring the pot behind a microphone. And let's not forget, Parsons is in a position to really help elevate this team. He's a rising star, a guy who could be the face of the franchise. But all that potential and all that talent will be wasted if he's more concerned with talking about the game than actually playing it. The Cowboys need consistency and focus, not drama. If Parsons can learn to keep his frustrations in-house and channel all that energy into his performance, he'll be able to help the Cowboys win in ways that all the podcast rants can't. The bottom line is simple. Micah Parsons needs to focus on his role as a player first and foremost. He can't afford to get distracted by off-field chatter. The Cowboys are in a tough division, and they need their best players to stay locked in. If Parsons wants to be remembered as one of the greats, he has to prove it on the field, not just in front of a camera. He has the potential to be one of the best to ever play the game, but only if he starts focusing 